Hey everybody and welcome back to another review retrospective on the channel. Today we're going to be talking about Hollywood Squares for the Nintendo Wii. As you can see here on the front of the cover, it has over 1500 questions, which I guarantee you will not get through because uh, I couldn't find myself able to play this game very long. On the back of the case, it shows Center Square for the win, laugh and play with the stars at home. And it has, you know, these four panels here to unlock new hairstyles, compete in head-to-head -head mode, and it showcases, like, all the celebrities that are in the game. There's only the five celebrities, you know, the announcer and four Center Square members, so it's definitely not, like, a full Hollywood Square. They definitely cheaped out on that end. Inside the case, you have the disc, which actually looks very nice. My copy of the game came with two instruction booklets, one in Spanish and one in English, uh, but you'll notice that they are extremely thin. They're about four pages long and don't really tell you much except the controls, and that's about it. I love full art discs, so anytime that the disc actually has art and looks nice, I'm going to shout it out. So yeah, good looking disc. Hollywood Squares was released in 2010 for the Wii. It's based on the game show of the same name, which ended in 2004. And yeah, you heard that right. The game show ended in 2004, and the game came out in 2010. I don't know who they were marketing this to, but it certainly seems quite a bit late. Currently, Hollywood Squares is about $6 complete in box. I did find this copy much cheaper in a thrift store, however. So if you really do want the game, it isn't that expensive, but you can probably find it out in the wild relatively easy as it is a Wii game that, you know, isn't too coveted. Not a lot of people out there looking for it. Now that we've covered the first issue of the game, the fact that it's six years after the show ended, let's get to the game itself. The game actually does use the actual host of the show, Tom, and clips of the show in the game. The single player is split into four different weeks for five weekdays. So you get Monday through Friday, so basically five days of the show, and then you'll move to the next week. You get Saturdays and Sundays off. The center square is each filled with a different celebrity per week. However, the other squares are all filled in with me's that are just kind of random, and I guess they just made them for the game. So they fill in with these just first name only me's, which isn't the best, but it's okay. It gets the job done, I suppose. When you select the center square, you'll be met with a clip from the actual show of Tom asking that celebrity a question, and then you'll be expected to answer that question. There are four different celebrities in the game, being Brad Garrett, Kathy Griffin, Jeffrey Tambor, and Martin Mull each being the center square for their week's worth of shows. The gameplay is extremely basic, but it does seem to be pretty faithful to the show. If you select a square, you see if you can answer the question, and if you get it right, you get the square. The first player to get three of a kind in a row, just like tic-tac-toe, wins the round. However, to win a round, you have to get the question correct. So when your opponent generally loses a question, or gets a question wrong rather, you get that square, unless it would make you win the game, in which case nothing happens to the square. So to win the round, you have to get a question right. You can't just lose your way into you know, the winner's circle. The first player to win two out of three rounds wins the game and gets to go to you know, the winner's circle. Once you're in the winner's circle, you have a chance to win 20,000 fake Wii dollars. <laughs> the goal of the winner's circle is to open the chest. However, to do that and to make it easier, you will get nine questions asked. One for each square in Hollywood Squares. And for every correct answer, they will remove a fake key. So the more questions you get right, the better the chances you have to open the chest. And if you open the chest, you get your 20,000 fake Wii dollars. If you don't open the chest, if you pick a fake key, you get 500 fake Wii dollars for every question you got right in the final round. 
One thing I would like to note is one of the fake Mies is called Carol, and I just can't look at that name and not think of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. And I knock on her door and I say, Carol! Carol! So I found myself every time I was playing these rounds just screaming Carol in my head. Overall, there isn't much to the game. I mean, it, it is legitimately just this. It's what you've seen. It's just the show, and even though there's over 1,500 questions, I can't think that many people would really play that much. It would likely be much more fun in two-player mode head-to-head, -head, but against the computer, you know, it's just not very difficult, and overall, there's just not much reason to continue playing. Yeah, you can unlock new clothes and stuff, but if you aren't a fan of the show, there's just not much here. For all those reasons, I would say that unless you just really love Hollywood Squares or you really love mid-2000s trivia, to steer clear of this one, I don't think it's worth many people's times. It's a nice little funny addition to a Wii collection that is pretty cheap, but don't go out of your way to find it. Thanks so much for watching another video on the channel. We're still trying to reach that 100 subscriber mark, so if you do like this content and you do like looking at old retro game kind of stuff, feel free to, you know, subscribe. I also stream over on twitch.tv slash cdn, so if you do want to come over and hang out, we play some more contemporary games there, as well as a lot of older stuff too, uh, finishing up my Persona 5 Royal playthrough, so thank you so much for watching. Hopefully we'll see you on the next one.